Hello and welcome to another episode of the Modern Maker Workroom. This is episode 20 of season three of the Modern Maker Workroom and we're almost to the end of this series. In today's segment, we're going to install the back lining of the doublet by laying it in place and tacking the top and bottom, leaving a little fold at center back. And this fold, which is called an ease pleat, will enable a little bit more freedom of movement. Once that's done, we're going to move on to one of my favorite steps, which is closing the shoulders. And I love this step because it is really the first moment in the construction of the garment where all the three-dimensional sculpting and shaping that you've done really starts to take shape and become very evident. And the garment really takes on a life of its own. You can feel its firmness, you can see where all of the, the specific structuring and shrinking and stretching and things have really done their job to make this garment highly contoured and ready to go on to a human body. I think in this aspect, all of our careful attention to detail has really paid off and it is going to create a lovely garment and I can't wait to see what you all do with it. And I'd love to see you wearing these things. Send me pictures of them. As always, if you like what we do here at The Modern Maker, go ahead and click that like button, subscribe, and leave us a comment or ask us a question. You can do it in public or you can send it to us privately at themodernmaker.net. So let's grab our thimbles, our needles and thread, and let's get stitching. Here's the notch for the waist area of the center back lining, and we've got it folded inside out. And right now we're just positioning this so that it lines up with that notch and the center back seam. Once I have it in position, I'm just going to throw a pin in to keep it in place for the moment while I uh, then follow up by doing the top. Now I'm leaving a little bit of vertical ease in this because I cut a little bit of vertical ease into the lining when we were cutting things out at the beginning. So you can see that there's a little bit of ease already vertically. And now I'm just gonna take a needle and thread and I'm going to make some stitches right through this wide allowance at center back into the fabric beneath. And it's just a couple of very strong stitches and I'll take two in one place and then I'll back up a little bit and take another two in one place. And that just gives it a really firm, secure anchor point at the waist. I'm not taking this all the way down to where I'll need to sew the hem of the lining in place. I'm just making sure that right above the seam allowance it's secured. And the same here at the top of the neck, about a pinky width from the cut edge to the stitching so that I don't lose the ability to hem the neckline back and get it secured in place. But that's all it is. It's just a few stitches and a few bits of tacking. Now you can see when I open this up, I have the top and bottom secured in place where they need to be. And then I have this nice open pleat going down center back. With that completed, I'll pin the waist in place and pin the sides in place and begin basting everything to secure it so that I can begin my stitching. The basting is long and fast and simple, and my only goal is to get the lining accurately in place with these stitches. They don't have to be perfect, they don't have to be tidy, because we're going to remove them as soon as the actual hemming is complete. And so as you can see, I just folded the bottom up so that the line matches the line coming off the bottom of the front, and then I stitched across the hem, and now I'm going to work my way up the other side back. Now as I work my way up the side back, I'm going to leave a good inch and a half to two inches. So that's, you know, about five centimeters that I'm leaving unstitched at the top because that allows me room to deal with the lining when the sleeves are sewn in. And I'm gonna leave that open and free and begin my pick stitching of the back lining into place. Now these are small, teeny tiny back stitches that are spaced quite a bit apart from each other and that creates the pick stitched appearance. I prefer this to a fell stitch only because this kind of squashes the lining flat along the edge where the, the fell stitch goes along the edge of the fold and has a tendency to wear out a little bit faster than stitches like this which are flat into the surface and slightly recessed. So again, work your way down around the bottom and up the other side, and we're done. Out comes the basting. 
and that back lining is in place. So we move right on to working with the shoulders. I'll begin by giving the shoulder a press and then I'll take my snips and I have to clip the center of the basting holding it in place because we're going to stretch the shoulder and you see how I'm stretching and then pressing with the iron and this gives a good form that'll sit nicely on the human body but if I leave that basting stitch in place then it will lock the width of the shoulder and then I'll distort the piece in the wrong way so I just want to release that pressure with that complete, now I just line this up with the back and the front together. You'll notice where I'm stitching is where the edges of the material cross at the outer edge. And that's so I know that when the seam is complete, I'll have a nice smooth line carrying over from the front onto the back. I won't have a little jog in the edge uh, because they're uh, misset. As I'm working, I'm also making sure to ease in a tiny bit of the back because the back shoulder is often cut slightly longer than the front. And that works well knowing that we have to stretch the front shoulder. It uh, connects well with the back shoulder. So it's basted in place first and then I'll use a nice firm back stitch with my top stitching strength thread. I will take my strong back stitches through everything. I'm going to pull these quite tight because remember, the entire weight of the garment hangs from the shoulders. So being certain to make these stitches strong and even is important. With it back stitched and completed, then I'll proceed to press the seam allowance open. The basting is removed before I can press, and then I'll lay the seam on top of my clapper the little wooden portion that I'm pressing on is very narrow, but because it's a hard surface, it allows the iron to be pushed down very firmly and to create a nice hard crease to flatten the shoulder area out. Once that's done, then I will take the wool padding and I'll lay them over the seam allowance and stitch them together. To begin this, I will stitch with just a little running stitch to secure everything well. I'm making sure to put enough ease into the curvature that it doesn't affect the outer drape of the shoulder. I want to make sure that the wool is slightly full on the inside rather than pulled tight. This means that the shoulder will be kind of pushed out off of the body and the pressure helps to support the weight of the garment on the shoulders. Once the running stitch is complete, then I will take small whip stitches along the cut edge to secure it in place. For extra certainty, I'm going to put this on my sleeve board and I'm going to give another puff with the steam iron. And this just makes sure that the wool underneath uh, has nested in properly to its permanent location. After each puff of steam, I'll use my clapper to press down on the outer seam allowance to be certain that it stays nice and flat. In our next segment, we'll focus on finishing the neckline with a stay tape and hemming it in place and then positioning the lining down on top of that.